For some, it has been assumed that the events in the Book of Mormon have taken place in a vast area, even though the Lord has not revealed the exact location of Book of Mormon lands. However, through a careful reading of the text, we can begin to understand that the Book of Mormon events took place in a generally small geographical area, and that its people were just one of the many civilizations inhabiting the Americas. Anthony W. Ivins, first counselor in the First Presidency and General Conference of 1929, said, We must be careful in the conclusions that we reach. The Book of Mormon teaches the history of three distinct peoples, or two peoples and three different colonies of people, who came from the Old World to this continent. It does not tell us that there was no one here before them. It does not tell us that people did not come after. And so, if discoveries are made which suggest differences in race origins, it can very easily be accounted for, and reasonably, for we do believe that other people came to this continent. The best way for scholars to determine uh, geographical distances in the Book of Mormon is from some of the descriptions of the Lamanites and Lehite travels during warfare. Uh, they, they talk about how many days march it was uh, to different areas. And based on all of the textual clues that we have, it would have been a very small area, probably in the neighborhood of of maybe four to five hundred miles long and maybe a hundred miles wide. Now a lot of people don't think that that's a very large area but if we compare it to uh, uh, Israel what we have there is an area of probably 300 miles long and 40 to 50 miles wide so by comparison it's not much different and, and all the Book of Mormon texts talk about short travel distances. I believe it was very confined in what is called Mesoamerica with the narrow neck of land being the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. Uh, I know that many Latter-day Saints think it took place all over North and South America, but the vast majority of Book of Mormon scholars, and even some general authorities, believe it took place in a very limited area. George Q. Cannon, who was a counselor in the First Presidency, in 1856, he said that the um, principal area for Book of Mormon cities would have been in Central America. John Taylor, uh, John Page, Parley P. Pratt, uh, Orson Pratt, and Joseph Smith, several LDS leaders took a, quite an interest in uh, a book that was published in about the 1840s by John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. They had made travels in the Mesoamerican area and had written about their experiences and Frederick Catherwood was an artist and he drew uh, some of the things that they had seen. And when that was published, uh, people in general took quite an interest in this of, of this these ruins. They saw these ruins as evidence for Book of Mormon cities. After receiving a copy of Stevens and Catherwood's book on Mesoamerica from John Bernheisel, Joseph Smith wrote a thank you letter to him, saying that the book corresponds with and supports the testimony of the Book of Mormon. I have read the volumes with the greatest interest and pleasure, and must say that of all the histories that have been written pertaining to the antiquities of this country, it is the most correct, luminous, and comprehensive. Orson Pratt is the one who really championed the hemispheric view during most of his tenure as a member of the Twelve. But in 1848, he said that the Book of Mormon accounts actually took place down in Mexico. Others would include John A. Witzo, who was a member of the Twelve, Milton R. Hunter, one of the presidents of 70, Howard W. Hunter, uh, as a member of the Twelve, and later became uh, president of the church. The latest one I've heard speak about is Dallin Oaks of the Quorum of the Twelve. Here I was introduced to the idea that the Book of Mormon is not a history of all of the people who have lived on the continents of North and South America in all ages of the earth. Up to that time, I had assumed that it was. If that were the claim of the Book of Mormon, any piece of historical, archaeological, or linguistic evidence to the contrary would weigh in against the Book of Mormon, and those who rely exclusively on scholarship would have a promising position to argue. In contrast, if the Book of Mormon only purports to be an account of a few peoples who inhabited a portion of the Americas during a few millennia in the past, the burden of argument changes drastically. It is no longer a question of all versus none. It is a question of some versus none. In other words, in the circumstance I describe, the opponents of historicity must prove that the Book of Mormon has no historical validity for any peoples who lived in the Americas in a particular time frame. A notoriously difficult exercise. Dallin H. Oaks. We know that there were other uh, Native Americans, Amerindians, living in the Americas for tens of thousands of years before the Book of Mormon took place. Uh, 
so yes, there would have had to have been the Book of Mormon peoples would have met and intermingled and intermarried. The exponential increase in numbers of uh, uh, Lamanites, quote unquote, uh, in the early uh, generations of uh, uh, the Book of Mormon account would suggest that they were incorporating indigenous peoples and usurping control or influence over those peoples. Uh, so I'm sure there was a tremendous amount of admixture from the very beginning amongst the general populace. That might give explanation to the repeated uh, statements by individuals in the Book of Mormon that they were a pure descendant of Lehi. Why else say that unless that was some distinctive characteristic that set that individual apart in the social structure of the times? It was very likely that the rest of the people were, were uh, marrying and, and, uh, and, and uh, assimilating uh, individuals from from the indigenous peoples. The Nephites, in fact, didn't know about the, their neighbors, the Mulekites, until um, the King Mosiah I left the city of Nephi with those who would follow him and traveled through the wilderness, as it says, and ended up in a place called Zarahemla, where he met the group that had descended from uh, Mulek and those who accompanied him to the New World. We read in chapter 7 of Jacob where Sherem came and, and he meets with Jacob. Now Jacob was one of the uh, original Lehite, uh, of the original Lehite party to come to the Americas. And here's Sherem meeting with Jacob and he doesn't know who Jacob is. Now there couldn't have been more than maybe a couple of dozen adults at that time from the Book of Mormon peoples. Why doesn't Sherem know him? Um, he comes from a different community. You know, what other community does he come from? He had to have been from some sort of outside community. He's just introduced by the words, there came a man among the people of Nephi. Came a man among the people of Nephi. Sounds like he wasn't of the people of Nephi. And yet he was um, clearly expert in their language. In fact, Jacob specifically states that he was, a, he was expert in the language of the Nephites. Well, you wouldn't say that of a native speaker. All native speakers are expert in their language, but it would suggest that here's a man whose native tongue was not the one used by the Nephites, and yet he knew Nephite well. He had learned it. Contact with other languages causes languages to change more rapidly, and so uh, it, it's probable that both the Mulekite language and the Nephite language were in contact with other languages, and that would cause both of them to change uh, more rapidly than would have happened in a vacuum. And so. Uh, they, they probably both changed considerably, and that would make them unable to understand each other after four or five centuries. At about uh, 200 B.C., uh, this is in Mosiah, we read that the principal grain of choice among the Lehites was corn, or maize. Now, unless maybe you're a farmer, most people don't know this, that corn does not grow wild. You cannot find wild corn. And that's because it takes very sophisticated cultivating techniques uh, to grow this, otherwise it dies. How is it that they received corn, which we know was in the Americas? Uh, it had to have come from some other culture that showed them how to uh, grow this, cultivate it, produce it. 